live from Midtown Manhattan, the Cube's live coverage of Big Data NYC, a Silicon Angle Wikibon production, made possible by Hortonworks, We Do Hadoop, and Wham Disco, Hadoop Made Invincible. And now your co-hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, we're back live here in New York City for Big Data NYC. This is where all the action is happening in New York City for Big Data. We got Hadoop World, we got Stratacommerce, a lot of news, a lot of conversations, business models, technology, tech athletes. We're here bringing it to you. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Valley. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante. This is the Cube, our flagship program, got the advanced extracted signal from the noise. Our next guest is Wouter Deby uh, with Spotify. Um, great service. Everyone should have an app, should have that downloaded. If they do, they love it. Um, um, welcome to the Cube. Thank you. So you're a tech athlete, as we say. We feel love to know what's going on under the hood. You know, there's a lot of tech buffs out there that want to know what's going on with big data. There's a lot of real interested uh, businesses, and we had Bill Schmarzel who wrote a book on using data for big business. So obviously, data is changing the landscape on the business front, but there's still a lot of huge technical opportunities with it, especially open source. And you know, we, we were just talking about open source as, as being a community thing that can do more than just one company. So so that's an awesome thing. So I want to get first get the, your perspective on this show. You guys had a great buzz going on day one. Um, a lot of conversations around your service because one, it's popular. Two, you're doing some pretty innovative things. So, so talk about what was going on early on the show here with you guys. What was uh, the big conversation? Well, the big conversation obviously was the music streaming, right? But um, when talking about data, we from the beginning we really knew that data was gonna gonna drive this company. Uh, we knew that we would have a lot of users. That was the goal, and we. We, we're getting there, we're, we have a lot of users, millions of them. Um, so that creates a lot of data. And we started really talking and thinking about like how, we can, how can we leverage that data to do uh, smarter business. So um, we've invested a lot of time, uh, money, in, into building a true uh, data infrastructure so that we, basically everybody at our company is able to use the data that we have. So data is key, obviously. Data, right. Getting the data flywheel going, that's a whole other thing. You have users, they're on devices, they're, they're sending off all kinds of data, gesture data, all kinds of usage data. Um, what did you guys do? You sit back and say, hmm, okay, we're going to be data driven, great, there's a use case, your customers make a great experience, right? So that's mm -hmm. kind of a, the business goal. Uh, what did you guys do next? I mean, what, take us inside the, inside the, inside the walls of, of the company and just some of the whiteboard conversations. Right. What, like, scratching your heads, going, okay, I'm going to do it this way, multiple architectures, probably some uh, interesting conversations around approaches, platforms, build your own, go open source. Just take us through some of those, some of those thoughts. Yeah, we've been, we've been a uh, pretty early adopter of Hadoop, because as I said, we knew that we, we had a lot of data, we were going to have a lot of data. Um, so it all started with, with reporting towards uh, record labels, uh, license holders, and things like that. Um, and up to a certain point, that, that's pretty, pretty simple. Um, and then we came to a point where Actually, our CEO, Daniel Ick, uh, I think pretty big visionary um, in the industry, uh, said, why don't we leverage that data? Why don't we start using, start doing analytics? So that was sort of the next step, business intelligence uh, analytics. Um, and from there, we've taken that to using, using data in our, um, in our product. So we do recommendations, we do machine learning, uh, basically directly towards our, our users. And um, Hadoop was sort of a given thing, I think. Um, at that time, and I think, think still today, it's the platform for doing big data. Um, so we've we've evolved on that. We uh, we've upgraded our versions. We've been looking at different vendors um, for for doing so. Um, I, I'm sure you've seen the news. We've uh, we're now doing business with uh, with Hortonworks, and they they give us a great platform for uh, for for exploring and ex exploiting Hadoop. So John, we had we have the full spectrum here today. We had Sears on earlier, right? <laughs> the oldest retailer in the country, transforming, and now we got Spotify transforming the music business. So how much of that? Talk about your business drivers um, that uh, are, are really the businesses pushing you toward. I mean, you are a very disruptive business model. A lot of traditional people in the music business probably aren't too happy with you, but at the same time, they're learning. I think realizing they have to evolve. So talk about yeah. some of those drivers that affect you as an IT practitioner. Um, it's, it's basically all about scale. So being able to handle scale, the amount of users, the amount of, there is so much music out there, right? We, we serve more than 20, 20 million tracks. Um, so being able to scale all of our backend systems across different continents, uh, 
that is that is the big driver. So growth the growth of the company is, is the main business driver that sort of falls down on onto uh, IT. And and what about the data conversation? I mean, it's it's very similar. Um, the more users we get, the more data we get, the more uh, features that we put into our product because Spotify obviously is known as sort of like iTunes in the cloud, but it's so much more than that. We have radio, we have discovery of music, we have playlists and artist pages. Um, we are on a diff mul multitude of different platforms, mobile, web, uh, desktop. Um, so with all those features, there, there's more data. Um, and also, since we've been trying to, to transform Spotify into a real data-driven company, uh, we've seen that uh, data exploding internally. So we've basically, uh, across three dimensions, we have that growth. Um, product features, amount of users that join the service constantly, and uh, internal usage of data. So what does that mean to you as an IT practitioner to be a, a data-driven company? You hear that a lot. In practice, what does it mean? Um, for us, it really means using data that we have to validate hypotheses that we, we come up with. Um, I would say that Spotify four years ago was more driven on a gut feeling. Uh, business decisions were made, okay, this sounds good, this looks good, this is what our comp competition does. Um, but nowadays, we really try to validate uh, our, our hypotheses with, with data. Uh, we do a lot of A-B testing, for example, so like testing out which features do work, which features don't work. Um, and that, to me, is really data-driven. I remember in the um, early 2000s, the uh, Harvard Business Review came out with an article basically talking about how the great leaders you know, govern, lead by gut feel. That gut feel seems to always trump. And they gave a number of examples, whether it was Lee Iacocca or Jack Welch or whatever it was. So I'm interested in, you know, it used to be a gut feel driven company and now you're you know, more of a data driven company. What has the result been in terms of the uh, effectiveness of your decisions and the productivity impact on the organization? Um, there has been a, a, a large impact there. Um, since we, we basically what we try to do is enable everybody uh, within the company to, to develop based on data, uh, make them learn from what they do. And, uh, because people now have access to data, they can iterate much quicker. Um, we push out a feature, uh, we can, within a matter of days, basically, we can see uh, how that, that feature affects uh, uh, user engagement, for example. Um, so that, those learnings we take in and we iterate on, on a particular feature or on the whole product. So this is an interesting discussion for me because I've watched a number of waves, John and I, of course, have, have cause, you know, been around for a while. But I think of the microprocessor, you know, revolution, right? It was, you remember, I'm sure, John, the first PCs, yeah. right? You get a PC, it was, it was transformational in terms of your productivity. The internet was similar, you know, networks were the same way, right? Yeah. The internet was the same way and starting to be able to use, you know, email outside your organization in a, in a big way. Data, there's not a, I, not a device I can buy, there's not a thing I can plug into the wall or a wireless connection or a LAN, it's, so what's the metaphor for, a, a PC in the data world. <laughs> what's, the, what's the tooling? What does that look like to transform the company? I think we're still trying to figure that out. I think mankind in general still tries to figure out what is sort of, how do we do this? And as you say, like the microprocessor, we sort of know how that works. The internet knows how that works. If you talk about database technology, there was sort of a standard how, like SQL, how we do kind of things. If you look at data, big data, we, we haven't really figured that out. And a lot of, a lot of people are currently trying to build that. Um, Hadoop is one part, and I think that Hadoop is, is sort of like the real foundational thing there. Um, but there's a lot of different technologies Technologies emerging, and that will probably converge in the future to that metaphor that you're looking for. Oh, Dave, I would, I would, I would. We've talked about this in the cube before, and this is why I like this this segment because the PC liberated people, gave them access to information through computing power, right? So that you know, the, the PC allowed for anyone to do stuff that they have to get time sharing on the mainframe. The mobile device is interesting because now I can have at the edge of the network things like Spotify. And what's interesting about the data model there is that the data is access to the data. The liberation is the data, but also the sharing, right? If you look at uh, use cases, people are sharing. They're sharing what they're listening to. They're sharing uh, their gestures, where their status updates are, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter. Um, so the user experience, the liberation is the connections, relationships, and then the overall collaboration. So I think you know, music is a great use case, right? I mean, besides you know, tech stuff that we're into, talking, talking tech, people love listening to music, right? So the lifestyle of the Cube concept is tech conversations, but music is 
is lifestyle. So enjoyment is the killer app, right? So, right. right? I mean, so okay. Now, do you agree? Yeah. Okay. So, is that the case? How do you? What tools are you using? What technology? You talk about machine learning. Can you guys be specific about what what kinds of algorithms you guys are using? What kind of coding? And how does that relate to like Hadoop and open source? Right. Um, I personally, I'm, I'm more in the infrastructure part of, of Spotify and data infrastructure. Uh, but I you know we, we use uh, collaborative filtering to do uh, to do recommendations. Um, that's that's as far as I know. Uh, for me, it's really if it runs on on our cluster, then. Uh, so just, can, can you describe the infrastructure a little bit? Yeah, we use we use Hadoop. Uh, we're actually currently moving moving to HTTP two uh, from from Hortonworks, um, which will give us Yarn, which is fantastic. I think that Yarn will be one of those game changers for us. Uh, MapReduce is great, but it doesn't solve everything. Um, we do uh, we start looking into graph processing, um, other types of machine learning that require a different paradigm. And I have a bunch of teams lined up already, saying like, okay, we, when can we access Yarn so that we can start writing our own Yarn applications, for example. What what, what will Yarn do for you? I mean, obviously it broadens your scope, but but talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it's, it will it will enable us to write different types of applications on top of on top of Hadoop, on top of our uh, our, our, our cluster. Uh, right now, it's only used for MapReduce, so we try to sort of mold all our problems into a, a MapReduce problem, uh, and that might not always be the right thing to do. So with Yarn, we sort of take that away, and MapReduce becomes just an application uh, on top of our cluster. Um, but there, there are other things, MPP, MPI, uh, the graph processing that we can start doing. Uh, building cl more clever machine learning or more efficient machine learning algorithms. And why Horton works? We've we've done a quite extensive um, vendor selection process, and we basically found that for us, we've invested a lot in Hive. Um, Hive is used by a lot of analysts. There's a lot of ad hoc um, stuff being done through Hive. It's easy for people. Um, we built our whole a lot of, large part of our infrastructure around that. And the way that Hortonworks is attacking Hive, making it 100 times faster than it is today or than it used to be six months ago, uh, that was for us the, the biggest uh, biggest thing to 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 um, to jump into this. So the expertise approach. around that. Well, yeah, well, and their exactly. their roadmap. Um, obviously, we looked at MapR and Cloudera. I know Cloudera is, is very focused on Impala, um, but as I said, like we have Hive already, um, and we would like to continue with that. So that was, the I would say, the biggest so, driver. So uh, talk about the cloud. I mean, cloud infrastructure. Obviously, um, we were just talking about Android. We were using those metaphors earlier. Android, iPhone, iPhone's closed, and you know, uh, Android's open. We were saying, well, Am Amazon's kind of like the iPhone of the cloud. It's kind of <laughs> open, but it's you know, they have an integrated stack. It's beautiful. It's fast. It's great, elegant. Um, other cloud like OpenStack, a little bit more plug and play. Do with your stuff. Do you guys use cloud, and and what what's some of the. Uh, Architecture look like on, on, on Mo prem. most of our most of our infrastructure is in house. So we have um, a few data centers around the world that we uh, where we, we actually have our own iron. Oh, so you're on premise. Yeah, um, we're we're looking at how can we expand to the cloud because it, there's definitely um, a lot of a lot of benefits there. But what I think that was the initial selling point for Spotify, and it's I think it still is, is that uh, latency with playback is is phenomenal. So you click a track and it looks you feel as if, it, if you're playing that directly from your device, either at your desktop or your mobile. Um, and that is something that is slightly harder to do when it comes to cloud because... Yeah, um, you can't control the yeah, first thing. It's all SLA on, on, on latency, yeah. Yes. Although it gets very lumpy yeah. in the performance. Um, yeah. You can get some low latency, but you can't always expect it. Yeah. Um, you kind of control your own destiny. That's kind of the mission, right? Yes. I think everyone's pretty much at that level. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about, um, you mentioned earlier, about extensive um, evaluation of the vendors. Um, obviously, Horton works one, right, with, with you guys, right? Yeah. You can, they support you guys. Do you guys look at Cloudera? Do you guys look at and other folks as well? Yes, we talked to Cloudera. We've talked to MapR. Those those three guys, and then yeah. And what was the main reason that you didn't go with say Cloudera? It was Hive, I would say. Um, we also found that that uh, that that Hortonworks the um, uh, cultural fit was uh, was very good uh, with them. Um, Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah, we were just talking them. open source. You know, is, the community is bigger than any one company. Yeah. And uh, George Kadifa, who runs HP, a great guy over at HP, one, one of the uh, stars at HP, runs HP, HP software, runs HP software, said, open source is not about free, it's about freedom. Mm -hmm. And uh, something that we truly believe in. Really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. Uh, uh, it's awesome. L love, love the Spotify service. You guys are great. Uh, continue to do good. We'll watch you guys grow. I'm sure you're going to continue to grow in a big way. Uh, a lot of happy 
users, folks that don't have Spotify, download it. You can listen to any song anywhere. It's not random, uh, like Pandora, which I do like Pandora as well, but Spotify, uh, so much more elegant and more easy to use when I want to hear a song. So uh, to me, that's my, my personal review, but, that, but take it for what it's worth. Um, appreciate it. Um, big you. data stories, big data conversations here on theCUBE. Big Data NYC is the event. We're covering all the action in New York City, Hadoop World, Strata Conference, a lot of action. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.